Yeah, you can sit there, Charles. All right. Now, you need prayer, and I'm going to let you pray for Charles. You, lay, you know, I've, if you read the Bible, I've, I've seen this. The Bible says they laid their hands. Now, I know a lot of times we lay our hand on people, but if we want to get more biblical, we need to lay our hands on people. That means this hand, left hand, right hand. Lay hands on them. And you'll find that in uh, Acts 19 when Paul found those disciples that, uh, that John the Baptist uh, influenced and everything. So he laid his hands on them. Jesus laid his hands on them. The believers can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So remember that. Everybody look at both hands. Because 10 is better than 5. <laughs> All right. Where's, all right, I want you to stand up here. No, no you sit there, I'll, Chuck. No, you, you want to stay, is, just, yeah. you do better stay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I want you to lay both your hands on his head. Both of your hands. And you pray for him. Yeah, you pray for him. Because see, the Bible says pray one for another and what? That you might be healed. So you're going to pray for him and he's going to pray for you. All right, you start praying for him, just like the Bible. Both hands on his head. Right up there. Uh, oh, my goodness, look out now. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we come tonight to pray for our brother Charles. We know he's been going through a tough time, Heavenly Father. But you are all power. Yes. You've got grace, mercy, mm -hmm. and, and you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes. We pray a special prayer for Charles. To heal his back, heal him from head yes, to toe, yes, Heavenly Father. Father. But especially strengthen his back. Yes, Father. Because Charles is a man of God. Yes, he needs the strength for his family, but he also has the shield of faith. And he has his brothers and sisters in the Lord here. And just, oh, just give it to them all, Heavenly Father. And we'll give you all the praise Thank you. Oh, oh, and all the honor and glory. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 All right, y'all, lay your hands upon yeah. you. Hold yeah. yeah. your hands on I, I, I need it for my lady. Yeah. Oh, you stand right now. You stand right there. Right here, right here. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Mm. Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, for Scott, Lord. Whatever his needs are, Lord, yes, Lord, that they are fulfilled, Lord. Whatever issues that his body is going through, Lord, mm. that you miraculously heal it right now. Mm. Right now through the blood Jesus. of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for him. Lord, he mm -hmm. doesn't know the blessing he is to us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Pure of heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, if we could just understand his pureness. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for his pureness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that while he could easily sit at home and say, that's not for me. He comes to serve you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He comes to edify you, Lord. Yes, Lord. He comes to give you honor, Lord. Yes. And praise, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, he does more for us than we do for him, Lord. We get so much from him, Lord. Thank you, and we Lord. thank you for him, Lord. I speak strength into his life, Lord. Yes. I speak strength into his body, Hallelujah. Lord. And I speak Bless, strength Lord. into his mind, Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, no Lord. weapon against him shall prosper, yes. Lord. And we thank you that Plead he Jesus, is following Lord. your footsteps, Lord. Yes. That Bless you live him, in him, Lord. And because Bless you live in him, Lord. he's living through you. Yes. We thank you for that thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name. Jesus name. Amen, amen and amen. Woo, glory. Oh, boy, that's good. Woo. Now, the Bible says it's the doer of the word that will be blessed. So notice this now. Everything we do here, I try to do it according to the scriptures. But they prayed one for another that you might be healed. There's times we have to confess our faults one to another that we might be healed. But the prayers of a righteous man and a righteous woman availeth much. I don't care what the, the, the doubts or the unbelief that might try to come into your mind. Just push that aside and say, the word of God. Say, God cannot lie. Uh, in Thessalonians, you will see that 
that when Paul was speaking, he said, listen, I'm not just preaching my words or the words of man. The words that I'm saying to you are not mere words of men, but they are the words of God. And so we have to see that and anchor our soul to God's word. Very simple. It's not that complicated. Now, so they prayed one for another. My job is to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. They were doing the work of the ministry by praying one for another. How many see all of the different principles that we're practicing? We worship and we praise God tonight. That's according to the word of God. So remember that. All right. How about, Mike, would you give everybody one of our sheets? We've been talking about the body of Christ. Okay, I'll pull that. Go ahead, pull it. Just pull the whole thing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> Some of my uh, uh, <clears throat> drawing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The first scripture I want you to put on the board when we do start, you can put it on the board now. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. That's us, the body of Christ. Okay, everybody got their little handouts? You can put that on your refrigerator. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now, everybody look at me. When you study the Word of God and Paul is speaking... He's talking about the body of Christ. And you have to realize that in his day, you had this group of people that were Jews. Everybody say Jews. Jews. Okay. Now the Jews were God's special people. And in their mind, they are God's people. Now, on the other hand, you had this other group of people that were Gentiles. By the way, I think all oh, that's us. But I got news for you. In Christ, there's neither Jew or Gentile. There's only one man. All of us make up the one man. Okay, I'm being very specific in my teaching tonight because when you read the word of the Lord, you've got to see what Paul is up against and how he's bringing this group of Jews and these Gentiles which are hostile to one another and he's letting them to know that the, the, the fuel was settled at the cross and now God's intention, God's plan, which you'll see in Ephesians chapter 3, was this. He said, I bow my knees when I think of the plan of God bringing these two groups of people together and making one man out of them and making one group of people out of them and they all have become members of the one body of Christ and they all have one father, all one baptism, one faith, one hope, one in Christ. Hello? Now all that is not up there, but I'm giving you a summary of how Paul sees it. Because see, I've read and read and read, studied, studied, studied. So I'm giving you a summary of when you read the Bible, you must understand that. All right? Let's read it. I therefore, <clears throat> I therefore, who's I? Paul. Identify the I, the we, a lot of different things you've got to identify. And take your time. I would love to have a Bible study. And all of us get our Bibles, get a round table, and go verse by verse through books of the Bible. I'd love to be able to have time to teach the body of Christ. Because we get a little bit here, a little bit there, there. But we've got to see, when you study verse by verse, you get a total different understanding and picture of things. Okay? Which, by the way, I do. Susan and me went through, again, Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Now, the next one we'll study tomorrow will be chapter 4. 
And we'd break down every verse, every word. If we don't know a word, Susan's got her dictionary, and she will let me know. What in the world is scruples? <laughs> well, I know. I wrote it down in my Bible now. All right. <clears throat> I, therefore, the prisoner for the Lord. Now, why would Paul, I mean, see, you got it. I, I thought he was an apostle. No, he's a prisoner. What does he mean by, by him being a prisoner? He's telling us that God has captured him by an act of his will. He's agreed to it. I'm a prisoner to Jesus Christ. And I love it. He's a good jailer. He takes care of me. So look at that. Prisoner for the Lord. Appeal to, and he says, I therefore appeal to and beg you to walk. Now, <clears throat> who is you there? And who else? Everybody say Gentile and Jew. Okay? Now, when you go all through the scriptures and, and, and read Ephesians, you, then you'll see that. You just have to take my word for it, but you check it out. He says, I, to, to and beg you to walk, lead a life, Jew and Gentile, worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called. With behavior that is a credit to the summons to God's service. Okay, now when you read the word of the Lord, you put yourself in there and you say, hmm, am I walking worthy? Am I leading a life worthy of the divine calling? Uh, is my behavior, I question my behavior, not, not, not that I'm doing anything bad, but my joking is sort of, uh, I'm praying God is, should I get rid of this? <laughs> I try. <laughs> Y'all pray for me now. <laughs> To which you have been called. We've been called. Everybody say, I have been called. I have been called. Now you're identified. We all have been called into the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are to have a relationship with him and a relationship with one another. And it's to be a godly relationship, a brother's relationship. All right. Now this is boy. We're heading somewhere. I got to move fast. Time goes by so fast. All right. Let's move to the next verse. Living as become you with complete lowness of mind. That means we don't think we're it on the stick. Anybody in here think you're it on the stick? We'll just turn the stick upside down. <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Notice, lowliness of mind. That means don't think you hit on a stick or you're a big shot. You this or you that. No, you're a saint of God. You've been made holy. You're a child of God. you got many privileges. you got many blessings. But I can't think, or you can't think, because maybe you got this gift, and I got this gift, I must be better than you. All that has to be cleared out of the body of Christ. That's what loneliness of mind is. You're just a servant. You're like Paul, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. Okay? We've got to see ourselves like that. Notice now, loneliness of mind, humility, being humble, being meek, meekness, unselfishness. You mess with my donuts. <laughs> you better not mess with my chicken. <laughs> the Bible says prefer others over yourself. Now we're talking about the body of Christ here. We are to prefer each other over ourselves. So we've got to bring this down to me in the message. How are we doing, saints? Hmm? Well, I think this body's doing right well, and I'm very proud of every one of you. I tell you, you're really, really showing Christ-like spirits. Okay? Now, look what it says. Unselfishness. 
gentleness, mildness, with patience. Oh, that word, the ha- bearing. Remember bear? You remember the bear? Bearing. Everybody say bearing. I don't know what I'm going to do with that person. Bear with them. With long suffering and humility. Just bear. Anybody had anybody in your family just bared with? Raise your hand besides me. Look at that. Look at the hands going. Same thing in the body of Christ. There may be some things you don't like about me, but you bear with Pastor Bob. I bear with you. Now, we know that's all through the Bible, by the way, that word is used. You can see that in Romans chapter 15, verse 1, 2, and 3. Of course, you remember that, you know. You that are strong in the Lord, you that are, 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 are really got faith, bear with those that have those scruples. You know what the scruples are, don't you? How many scruples do we have in here today? <laughs> Just be gentle, be humble, whatever you say. Here I am. I'm a dead man, but I'm alive, alive. See, once you get rid of that their pride and stuff, you just get humble and meek. And this is what, and you say, well, all of those things I'm not. I know you're not. That's why the Holy Spirit's been given to us. And he'll give us grace upon grace to overcome those tendencies to be big cheese on the stick. Everything I got is better than you. Do, 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 do. See, that's what destroys relationships. That, y'all think I'm funny. I've been around a long time. I've seen churches totally dis- disintegrate because people didn't have those characteristics. See, I'm talking from experience. I'm not just some little kid that's come out of a Sunday, uh, 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 kindergarten. I've been around a long time and I've had vicious men, vicious women tear the church of Christ down. Paul knows that. And he's saying, now this is our behavior pattern right here. Walk worthy of the calling that we have. And you guys are. I'm not saying you're not. But you need to see that because we're going to have more people coming in here and you're going to see some characteristics in their life that you're going to have to bear with and pray for until God changes them from the inside out. Let me see how much uh, Jesus is in this young man. I'll step on his foot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> the congregation didn't hear you. Won't you call me? <laughs> oh, church, love me tonight. But see, I'm believing in revival. On the West Coast, they're having revival. In Virginia, they're having revival. I believe we're going to have revival because we're going to line up with the word of God and we're going to let the old man die and we're going to let the new man come forth and we're going to be faithful and walk worthy of the calling that God has called us. Just think, God Almighty has called us as a body and brought us together and knit us together. And when he sees the unity, he will command the blessing. Woo! Glory to God. Now, this is how you keep yourself free. By just simply loving one another. Does that mean I don't like everything everybody does? No, of course not. I love you. Paul said, it's the love of Christ that moves me, that, <clears throat> that motivates me to do what I do. Do we understand that? Love is the more what? Perfect way. Something in the Bible about faith and hope and love. But what? Love. I was telling my brother here tonight, some of you don't remember, some of you are old enough to remember, where where a, a black man or a black woman just couldn't go into any restaurant, sit down and eat. I remember those days. And I was in the Air Force in 1952, uh, <clears throat> a, bra- a black brother and, and a white brother and myself, we were in uniform and we rode the train and we went to Delaware. We were assigned to Newcastle, Delaware Air Force Base. 
We got off the train. We go, well, we're all hungry. So we went by this restaurant. My black brother sat down. The other white brother sat down. I sat down. The waitress come up. You'll have to go. I said, go. No, we're here to eat, uh, order something. We want to order something. He said, no, we don't serve black people here. How many remembers that? You remember that? I said, well, if you don't serve him, you won't serve me. So we got up and we left. Now, I want you to think about it. Jew and Gentile. A Gentile and a Jew. And a Jew would not eat with a Gentile. This is what Paul was up against. So when you read the scriptures, he's talking about, listen, you Jews, you Gentiles, be of one mind, be meek, be unselfish. See, this war between the Jew and the Gentile was, went on for years. The Jews in their mind, they were God's people. They were the chosen people of God. Can we under, so when you read the scriptures, you must understand where Paul's coming from. And I've got to get busy here, but I want to draw that picture before you, what they are against, and really today, how much of that do we really see with the different races? Because see, there's neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ. In Christ, there, we are all one man. One man, not two men, one man in Christ. That's how God sees us. One body, one baptism, one faith, one hope, one Savior, one Lord, one body, one man, a new man. Now, I know some folks don't like that. That's what you're going to have to change. You're going to have to get those qualifications right up there. Humble yourself under the mighty of God. So who do you think you are? What do you have that God hasn't given to you? How many love me? Half the people I love. <laughs> I know I don't have to yell, but see, <sighs> once we can see that, we see the importance of God's word. That we don't make them. And Paul had the job because see, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. And he knew he was a Jew and he knew how the, the Jews thought and he knew how the Gentiles thought. Now he's bringing these two hostile groups of people together and going to make one body out of them. Read my lips. It's going to take the Holy Ghost, but God was showing him. This is what you've got to preach. Go to the next verse. I've got to move fast. We're talking about one body. Because we see this today. Be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony. Why would he? Of course, these two people, though these two groups love the Lord, why would Paul have to tell them to eat harmony grits? Because <laughs> they'll kill each other. You've got to remember, generations after generations after generations after generations, the Jews were God's special people. And now, all of a sudden, God has got salvation for the Gentiles too? So can you see the struggle and how Paul had to bring the letters and the Word of God into place to get them to understand, but to get us to understand? Keep the harmony and everybody say oneness. Oneness. Just look at the word. Let it of and produced by the same spirit in the binding power of peace. We have the liberty to do uh, many different things. I could eat meat offered to idols, but if it offends one of my brothers, I won't do it in front of you. But I have the liberty. We have a great liberty in the spirit. But if we're practicing something, doing something that's causing division in the body of Christ, I know that word. In fact, I think you're all old enough Strong enough in the faith to take this. How many feel like you can take a strong word? Let's see your hands. How many can't? <laughs> a 
Oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> we'll just pray for you. <laughs> Turn to 1 Corinthians, and then we'll come back to that. Because I, I want to show you how important this is now. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If it, and if it ain't 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, then it's 2 Corinthians. <laughs> All right, here we go. <coughs> If anyone does hurt to God's temple, anyone, deacon, pastor, elder, minister, believer, anyone, 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 or corrupts it, what is it? The temple. Who, who, who's the temple of God? Raise your hand. What did Paul say under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? If you do anything to hurt God's temple or corrupt it with false doctrine or destroy, or destroy it, God will do hurt to him. That's why I try to tell people, love one another, because you're going to get on the wrong side of God when you mess with his children. Is that not right with you? Charles, is that right with you? You don't mess with his kids. You put hurt on them. You find you're going to get hurt yourself. Come on, fathers and mothers, is that not true? See, we got to know the Word of God. Why do I teach people to love one another if they don't love one another? Uh, Galatians 5, uh, Galatians, um, yeah, it's in Galatians. Just take my word for it. <laughs> Galatians 5, 15, if you bite and devour one another, watch out, you'll destroy one another, and God will have to destroy you. Now, we don't understand. Well, I thought God was a loving God. He is a loving God. If you got you got a hundred you got a hundred sheep, you got one that's got a disease, and you know it, and you know if you let that one disease that destroys all those others, if the intelligence tells us you're gonna to have to deal with that one and get a little leaven leavens the whole loaf, a little leaven leavens the whole church, a little leaven leavens the whole 100 chickens, 100 sheep, 100 cows, 100 of God's people. So you got to get that leaven out. And if God has to send you, bring you home, he'll do it. See, I know people that uh, checked out before God's really wanted them to check out. But because they could not function within the body of Christ. Look at it. God will do hurt to him. King James says destroy him. Aren't you glad you're strong Christians and you can take this type of preaching? But see, we have to see that. And I try to warn people. Shut your because we destroy ourselves with our own mouth. Life in death is in the power of the foot. Huh? Why? Why? Oh, 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 tongue. Oh, the mouth, tongue. Read Acts. Somewhere about Ananias and Sapphire. What, 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 what? What happened? Did they check out quick? God checked them out, didn't they? Huh? Anani remember, how many remember Ananias that far? Acts chapter 3. Ooh. I knew a king that ate uh, grass for seven, I think, seven years. Nebuchadnezzar. Boy, I tell you, when he came back to his senses, he, he, he walked straight as an arrow. I mean, he was, doom, hit the mark every time. Bring him to corruption of death and could destroy him for the temple of God is holy. That's you. That's me. We are holy. Sacred to him. We are sacred to God. And that temple, you, the believing church, and its individual believers are. Mark it down. Read it. You better write that scripture down and get into the Bible and make sure you understand that. Because you read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you'll understand why that's in there. Because he builds up to that. Now, that's God's love. 
Let me see how much love you got. You got a hundred chickens. You got one that has a disease, and you know if you let that one chicken live with those other 99, they will all catch that disease. What would you do, Charles? Kill that one. What would you do, Mrs. Keys? Gotta get, rid of it. get rid of that chicken with the disease. Willie, what would you do? <laughs> Linda, what would you do? Huh? Listen, now think about it. You're going to save the other 99. You know, when you read the Bible, there is the, the Lord going out and saving the one. Right? Here he has to get rid of the one to save the 99. Come on, church. Don't shout me down. I'm preaching truth to you. And I will not preach lies and deception. It's time for the church to realize what these principles that God has put into the word of the Lord is for us to walk straight and healthy and strong. And be a, the temple of God, for we are holy in his sight. Yes. And he will not let one individual destroy his body. No. Jesus said something like this. Let's get it all working together now. If your hand offends you, what do you do, son? Huh? Cut it off. You hear what he said? He said, cut it off. It's best. To live down here for the little bit of time we live down here with just one hand. Is that not true? Then to allow that one hand to send you to hell. You're struggling with this, ain't you, honey? You got it? Okay. See, when we understand that, that's the loving Heavenly Father. And now let me sketch this principle. God, instead of destroying the whole human race, he let his son die that they might live. God will take the one out to, to allow the others to live. Can we see the principle? One is in the negative, one is in the possible. Possible. I'm close. Pos Help me out, son. Positive. Right! You heard that man say that. The priest, the high priest said, it's best for one man to take him out than the whole nation. I mean, remember that. That's in the scripture. I'm paraphrasing it. So as we move along, we see these principles, and now we we just gonna love one another, ain't we? We'll stand up here and let me love you a little bit, son. Oh my goodness, you better I better love that man. <laughs> and I do. The Bible says because of his intense love, God's intense love, he has to just bless people. You see, once love takes over, the love motivates you, and you can't help but loving people. That's just the way it works. And the reason that some of us can't love others is because the old man is still in charge, but as he dies out, the new man comes forth, created in the image of God, and that's all you can do is love folks. And you may have a hundred cattle and you got one that's sickly. You know you have the wisdom. If you let that one, that one leaven stay there, it'll corrupt all the others. I've prayed people into church. I prayed them into this church and I've had to pray them out of this church. Because they wouldn't change. That's the job of the pastor. The leaders know these things. Now, all right, we got that. Now, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4, and let's get on verse 4. 
4, 4, Ephesians. All right, now remember Paul's talking here because he knows if they don't change, if they don't come into unity, God's going to have to do some surgery. How many has had surgery in your life and you had to have something removed? Because if you didn't have it removed, you would die. Do we understand that? Very simple, not complicated. Now, right now, it came to my mind, and I'm going to pray for Andy. Father, I thank you. <clears throat> we pray for Andy tonight, Lord. We thank you that you're strengthening her, and we thank you that you're giving her your strength, that you will bless, strengthen her. I thank you for it right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, here's what Paul is saying. All right, Jews... All right, Gentiles, now come on now, I'm going to show you something. Now listen, it ain't two bodies, it ain't Baptist and Methodist and Shield of Faith and Joe uh, Presbyterian and whatever. No, there is one body and one spirit, just as there is also one hope that belongs to the calling you received. Now why did Paul say that? Because he was talking to a bunch of folks that said, oh, well, you know, we're this and we're that. and Well, you know, this is that and we're this. No, 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 no. All of us, black, white, yellow, I don't care what culture you come from. God has made us all one in Christ. He's put everything that was in heaven and earth that went astray because of Adam's fall and Satan's nonsense and one thing and another. Put us all in Christ and the confirmation is Finished and complete in him, in Christ. And Paul says, when I think of the plan of God, I bow my knees to God. That's the plan of God. Now let's move on. I want us to... Uh... All right, verse 5. <clears throat> verse 5. There is one Lord. Everybody say, there's one Lord. There's one, faith. one faith. One baptism. One now, wait a minute. That's contradictory. We know there's more than one baptism, don't we? There's baptism with water. Baptism with the Holy Ghost. Baptism into the body of Christ. Here's what Paul is saying. Listen, we were all baptized by the one Spirit into the body of Christ. That's the one baptism that he's talking about. When we received Christ, we were all baptized into one body with one faith, one church, one God, one Jesus, one Savior. And if you disagree with that, you're out. Because that's the only way it's going to work. He did it. He didn't leave it up to us. He baptized us, emerged. That's what baptism, baptism is emerging down into the water, totally saturated. And we all, it, it's like um, you're making a cake. Our sisters um, make cakes. Uh, Lisa made one and gave us, uh, uh, and I, I didn't, I ate it all. <laughs> Give us another so I'll get on the make sure Susie gets <laughs> Oh God forgive me. See that was naughty, wasn't it? And I repent of that, but it sure was good, I tell you. <laughs> How many of make that mistake? Oh, we all did. But see, listen, there is one say one Lord. See that's why I, I, I don't say nothing bad about the Baptists or Methodists. I, I was in the Baptist church, but I always realized I was in the one church of Jesus Christ. I was in Christ. They, they called me Baptist, whatever, whatever you want to call me. But Jesus calls me. Part of his body. See how dangerous we, we just do things and so casual and not realizing the result that plays against our physical, our mental, our spiritual life that we're being destroyed and we're ignorant of these facts that I'm bringing up tonight. Galatians chapter 5 verse 
15. Mm. I didn't know this was going to go this way tonight, but anyway. I'll just let God be God. But if you bite, who's he talking to? He's talking to Jews and Gentiles, talking to you and me. You can take this in, in, the, in the individual family, in the family of God, or even in an organization. It, but if you bite and devour one another, who is devouring one another? See, so you got to get it straight in your mind. We've got to know what we're doing, what we're thinking, what Paul is saying. Who's devouring one another? Anybody? Would you say, Willie? The body, the body of Christ. Individually, families, and the body of Christ. Here's what it says. But if you bite and devour one another in partism strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by the devil. Somebody correct me. Hello, are you out there, church? See, this ain't no Sunday school teaching. This is the word of the Lord. Boy, <clears throat> makes me want to straighten up. Huh? Huh? Does it make you want to straighten up? Huh? That's why I tell Susan, I said, honey, if I say anything bad about anybody, you can slap me. Sometimes we're just going to have to be slapped with a frying pan. Oh, I like the sound of it on my head. It's got a certain ring to it there. Uh. But I get the message. And I tell her the same thing. I say, honey, come on church, don't shout me down. Dad and mom, husband and wife, love one another by correcting one another in love. You shut your, you shut your mouth. Am I speaking truth? You believe I'm speaking truth. I've seen too many families destroy one another. We destroy one another. The church destroys one another. The families, the people of God, God's creation is destroying one another. Because they don't obey the word of God. Read that and read it good. But if you... Say, you. you. Say, that's me. If I bite and devour a, one of my brothers and sisters in the Lord or somebody in my family in partism strife. What is that, son? Help me out on that. Hmm? What is that word? Anybody tell me what that word is? Tell me, professor. Factional. A faction. It's factions. So this group over here is against this group over here. That's fractions. See, if you read and understand 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting with half in chapter 1, 2, and 3, then you'll come to understand verse 17 in chapter 3, because that's what they were doing. They were saying, well, Paul is my teacher. Uh, uh, Apollos is my teacher. I, I belong to that group. Uh, no, no, I'm, for, I'm, I'm on his side. No, he's my deacon. No, that's my teacher. No, I... Anybody back there? Very few. This is how you empty churches. But whoever stays will be solid in the Lord. We'll have the power of God. We'll be, we'll be that 300 that God can use. Amen. See, we, 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 we haven't had this type of teaching because, because we, we, gosh, we got a lot of things to straighten up in the church as a whole. Now, I thank God for this body. Now, we, I, I, I understand the ones that do, do the dippy dippy do. I understand. I know who you are and I pray for you. But I don't know how long I can hold the hand of God <laughs> if you continue on, it might take you out. <sighs> Horrible. What you got? Pastor, remember when they when they spoke against Moses? Oh yeah, oh yeah, all through the Bible, oh yeah, Aaron and Sarah, 
not Sarah, but Aaron and um, Aaron and Hallelujah, huh? Marion. Marion. They spoke against Moses. Moses went to prayer. If he didn't pray for them, because Marion got cancer, not can well, leprosy. How many remember that? How did they? How did she get that? Who put that on her? Some of you are scared to say God. Because God is not going to let one person or a group of people destroy his work. Because thousands of people that are going to hell are depending. God is depending upon the group of people that he's called out to walk worthy of the calling of God. That God has put upon us to reach out for the lost and see that they are saved from a burning hell. This is too deep in me, isn't it? Maybe it's time for me to, re to just retire. <laughs> but see, I see. I've seen it for years, and I say, oh, God, I don't want to preach that. They won't love me anymore. <laughs> I don't get no more banana pudding from nobody. But see, you come to a point. You just got to just let it out. In love. I love everybody. And I'm not, listen, most of you are doing great. How many is getting understanding tonight? Get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding of how God works and moves. Yes, he is a God of love. You're a God of love. I'm a, I'm not, I mean, you're a person of love. I'm a person of love, but you're not, you yourself, if you've got 10 kids and you've got one in there that's causing trouble, you're going to have to deal with Mr. Trouble. Because you love them. You know your biggest job in a family? Somebody tell me. To keep everybody from destroying one another. Is that, if you had 10 kids, if you got three kids... Right, Charles? How I many had more than... Did y'all pray for your dad and mama? They had, what, nine kids? They, 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 they did their best to keep you girls from killing one another. Is that right? Huh? Huh? You, you can talk to daddy, I understand. All right, let's move on here now. Let's get back to Ephesians, okay? Now, all right. Everybody, I want you to turn to um, verse 7. Verse 7 now. <clears throat> How important it is for us to keep the unity in the body of Christ, in our homes, in the body of Christ. All right, everybody there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. Now, yet, yet grace, God's unmerited favor, was given to each of us individually. Everybody say, I got a measure of God's grace to function, okay now, in that place that God has put you. All right? So why would we strive to knock somebody out of their position that God has put in that position. Now don't shout me down. Why would somebody in the body of Christ that's supposed to love you as a brother and try to knock you out of that position that God has given you the grace to function in that spot? They don't realize they're fighting against God. Look what it says. Given each of us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bounteous gifts. I have the gift to teach, to pastor. Why would somebody want my position? Some of you have the, the, the position and God's given you that grace to function as a teacher. As a minister of singing and worship and praise. And our job is to pray for each person that has that gift, whatever it is. And thank God they may have ten gifts and you ain't got but one. And you better say, God, thank you. 
You got 10 gifts, you're going to be working 24-7. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? All right, look what it says now. Go to the next verse now. Now, see, Paul is bringing up something here. He's trying to get us to understand something now. One body, one faith, one thing. God has given everybody a measure of gift to function, grace to function in that particular gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he led captivities captive. He led a train of van vanished foes, and he restored gifts on men. Now, you know, when he went, when Jesus went down in hell, and when he was resurrected, how many know a lot of people was resurrected with him? And they went around in Jerusalem, showing themselves to their loved ones. That's in the Bible, Okay. And, and many of them was, uh, came forth, and when he did that, he ascended into heaven. And then he appointed, now go right on down before, because of the time element. Look at verse 11. Go to verse 11, and we'll have to quick, quick, quick. All right, here we go. And his gifts were varied. So we got all different people in here. His gifts vary. He gives each one of us certain gifts. He himself appointed and gave men to us. Who are these men that God gave to us? Somebody tell me. Five-fold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then they point certain people as God leads them to bring forth a church. I know what it says. Some to be apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, some evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some pastors, shepherds of his flock, and teachers. So, who God has put in these positions, who is anybody to try to knock them out of those, those positions? And from those men... They, those men point elders, teachers, different people as they see the Holy Spirit working and they pray. And you'll see that in the scriptures too. Look what it says. Go to the next verse. Now, here we go. Now we're talking about the body of Christ. Understanding how God has designed it and how he uses all of us to carry on his work. What was his attention of giving these gifts to men? These five-fold minutes. What was God's attention? His attention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. That's my job. That's the job of, of the five-fold ministry. To equip the saints. His consecrated people. That they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. Wow. So it's you and our job, and I've called and, and, and appointed elders and teachers and ministers and all to help me in that, to equip all of you towards building up Christ's body, the church. Wow, what a responsibility. How many sees the picture? How many rather not see the picture? <laughs> All right, now let's go to the next verse, and we'll have to quit here. Just getting started, got to quit. All right, that it might develop, that it might, what, what is it? What, what is that word, it? who's it? The body, the body of Christ, the church. <laughs> develop until we all attain oneness in the faith. And in the comprehensions of the full and adequate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood. The church, you, me, the body of Christ. That's God's intention. That's why he put the five-fold ministry in there. You see the big job we got in it. Hmm? Now know it says, the com completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Woo! We better trust the Holy Spirit to do that work in you. 
the measure of the statue of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him. We need to sit down and just read, meditate on that. Mm. So let's ask ourselves a question. Individually and as a group. Where are we from one to ten? You don't have to answer that, but not to be mean, and I'm including myself in it, only God can bring me to that complete perfection. And how far I am from that at this point, I, I do not know, but God knows. But I've read the Bible and I know the Spirit of Christ, and it's beautiful. He's wonderful. You just can't help from loving him. Can you imagine a body of believers living epistles? Not only individual, the Bible says, that we are to be living epistles. That's heavy. Living epistles. Read by all men. What does that mean? That's heavy, isn't it? How many is getting sleepy? Besides me. <laughs> Living epistles read by all men. All right, let's move. I'm, I'm going to close. I'm, I, man. And that was verse. What was it, 13? Okay, 13. Now, I got to say this next verse, 14. Put 14 and I'll have to quit. Oh, man. 14. So then, so then, so then, so then, after we get to that point and we're down, we're grown up, and so then we may no longer be children tossed like ships to, to and fro between changes gusts of teachings and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery, inventing error to mislead, to be misled. That's where God wants us to bring that we don't be fooled by a lot of folks out there Boy, you study that. Next verse and we'll quit. We'll quit on the next verse. Here we go, 15. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things into him, Christ, who is the head of this body, even Christ the Messiah, the anointed one. Amen. That's the plan of God. That's why Paul said, when I think of the plan of God, oh, I bow my knees to my heavenly Father to bring two groups of people like Jews and Gentiles together, making one man out of them, and he will express himself through that body of believers to the world. And that's what we're doing now. We're preaching to the world by the internet. Materials are going out. We're doing everything we know to do as a body of believers together. And we're all one in Christ. And we all have a part in that. And I want to tell you, I am proud of what I see in your lives. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. It's a big order. But we believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Lord, we're just not down here drifting with the wind of doctrines. But we are solid in God, solid in our purpose, knowing that we are the temple of God. And God is using us in many ways to touch many, many of his creation. And we want to thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. God